Hi everyone and welcome back to the next episode in our behind the scenes of creating Saving Christmas, a game I released at Christmas time as a surprise little drop. And part of that surprise is this uh, series talking about how we made the game. Now I've given you all the assets in the description below as well as the link to the game where you can download and play it. So currently we're working on our goblin and getting our goblin's AI working correctly. So we, last time we started working on the wandering sort of code and this time we look at chasing and fix a few things too. So go back to your uh, Goblin AI controller. And on your AI controller, we're going to set up something on here to always be doing the check for the distance rather than doing it on the behavior tree like we did in the last episode. So without that there, we can delete that. We're gonna go back to our Goblin AI. And from here, we're going to do a tick event because we want to always be checking the distance between the player and the object. So we want to get the controlled pawn and get their location and we want to also get the player character and get their location we're going to work out a distance between these two so type in distance vector and plug in both those vectors and that will output a float, which is the distance between these two. We're going to check whether or not that is beneath a certain value. So if it's less than or equal to another float, we're going to put this into a, uh, not sorry, not into a branch, but we're going to change the value first of all to 750. So it's the same as what we've done before, but on the tick. And what this is going to do is we're going to put this into a Boolean on our blackboard. So go to your Goblin BT, go to the blackboard, and we're going to change the new key to a bool and add this bool, boolean key to be called um, senses player. And click save. On your AI controller now, we can get the blackboard and set a value as bool, plugging it in and making literal the key name so make lit and type in the exact phrasing we just did so you want it to be exactly the same as census player capitals and everything and the ball value will come from that so when it's less than 250 it'll be true if it's less than not less than it'll be false click compile and then go back to your uh, behavior tree now the behavior tree, we're not going to use a blackboard based condition there, we're going to put it onto a wandering up top here. And the condition for wandering is that the census player must be set to not set. So as long as that is not set to be true, it'll do this. Okay. Um, click on it and we'll make sure it on results change it aborts uh, self. Okay, so it stops wandering when that changes so when I push play he won't move and if I move away he will move and move close it'll stop moving move away he will move and stop okay so that's what we want for that correct behavior next we're going to do the chasing so go back to your behavior tree and this chasing sequence is what we are focusing on now so the first thing you can do is find the player location so we're going to make a new task bt task blueprint base and we're going to event receive execute AI and we want to do a get player character get actor location and we're going to store that into a blackboard key selector variable here so we go bb underscore player location change the variable type to blackboard key selector and make it editable then from there we're going to drag it out choose get and set value as vector plug this in and plug in the value like so so now it's got the player location and set it into the blackboard we can go finish execute and tick success 
hit compile and I'm going to rename our task to find player and on that behavior tree we're going to drag find player out now the bb player location is going to be set to not distance but target location hit save and next we're going to do the actual chasing now we can't just use move to because move to uh, will move the whole way before it changes its direction we want it to be following you the whole entire time so we have to create our own one so let's create a new task bt task blueprint base and we go event receive execute with that done we're going to drag the controlled pawn pin now and do drag your controlled pawn pin and do cast to goblin and from there we can get uh, movement component catch movement there you go and from get catch movement we are going to set max walk speed to 400 okay so do that next we're going to tell it to move to the location so from there go ai move to the pawn is from here so drag that out pawn. and the destination is going to be a value from a variable so go call this one bb underscore target location and make it editable drag it out which is get and from there get value as vector we can now plug that into our ai move to and end it with a finish execute tick the box and compile so go back to your behavior tree and on chase player on the chasing branch you want to make sure that the bb target location is set to the target location key once you've done that, click save and let's have a look what we've got here. So now he's chasing me at full pelt speed. But he'll chase me indefinitely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the distance between him and the and his origin. Okay. So let's work out that. So to make him uh, run back to his origin when he moves too far away from it, we need to work out the distance between that. So go to where you have find player task. And at the start of this, we want to check the origin location of the goblin and the current and its current location. So new variable, and this is going to be bb underscore origin, and make it editable. This should be a blackboard key selector, and drag this out. Choose get, and then from there, get value as a vector. We want to check the distance between this and the current pawn. So from the controlled pawn get location and we are going to do distance vector I can that in like so now if this distance vector is less than or sorry is greater than or equal to 1000 we're going to go into a branch The force will continue on and the condition is there. So if it is greater than 1000, true will happen. And if true happens, we're going to take it to finish execute, but we're not going to tick the success box, causing this task to fail, which means on the behavior tree, this will fail and then go back up the sequence onto the next branch, which we'll do next. But before that, let's make sure the BB origin is set to the correct key by changing it over here on the right hand side. And I'm going to hit save. So now he'll stop doing the chasing if we are too far away. So let's have a look and see how that looks in game. And there you see he has stopped chasing me. The next trick is to make him return back to his original origin and continue wandering from there. So to do that, we're going to go into our behavior tree. And we're going to add another branch to our selector here but rather than a sequence we're just going to do a new task so go new task bt task blueprint base 
and we're going to rename this one return and open it up go event receive execute AI and what we're going to do is tell this census player to be set to true uh, it's not so it's not true so then it can continue going through this okay so on return let's get the blackboard for the boolean so sense player and that be a blackboard key selector editable drag this out which you get and then set blackboard value as bool and this can be set as false after which we take to finish execute tick the box hit compile and let's go back to our behavior tree and add that onto our selector here so this is going to be called return and bb census player is going to be that boolean census player so when it reaches this it's going to set the re uh, return uh, on, on return the bb census player census player blackboard key back to false allowing this to continue okay however the problem is is that his distance to the player is still going to be quite close so it's going to blast right through that and into the chasing so what we want to do for this is we want to make sure that chasing has a condition too so it can only chase the player when he is close to his origin so the chasing here will need a decorator much like this one does and the decorator will only work if he is within a certain range of his origin so I'm going to go into our Goblin AI controller and we've already got uh, something similar to this but what we need to do is actually we can copy a lot of this so we can just copy this and paste that over here but rather than get the player character we want to get the origin so if we rather than going into the blackboard again I'm just going to drag this uh, out from here and promote that to a variable and call it origin then down here I can just drag origin in as my second ve vector that return value now gets set into the blackboard using the distance float so we want to get blackboard set value as float and the key name is going to be make literal it's called distance and the float is going to be there hit compile and now it's going to be updating that distance from the origin all the time so I go back to my behavior tree and on my chasing right click add decorator blackboard I can click on my blackboard here and change it to distance and make sure it is less than 1000 so it only chase us if his distance from the origin is less than 1000 if it escapes that then it won't do this it's save and let's have a look what we've got okay so there we have the goblin running back to his origin and now you can see his speed is set to fast again so what we need to do is where we set the speed higher we need to change it to set it to low so similarly when we've done on our behavior tree on find player we set this up to uh, was it change this one? No, it's on chase player, wasn't it? On chase player, we set up the cast and change max walk speed. I'm going to select all that and copy that, and I want to put it onto our find location. And I put that start, paste that in, and plug that into our controlled pawn. I change the value to 100. After doing that, Go back to your Goblin AI controller and at the start here, before we change the senses player boolean, we want to check the distance between uh, the origin and 
the vector location. So from that, I can actually, actually let's, let's grab this and cut that and put it at the start. And let's promote that to a variable. And we call this one distance from origin. And we're going to check if the distance from the origin is less than or equal to. And this will have to be, uh, let's say, let's say 250. Okay. Plug in our set there. And we want this to be case if this is both true. So go and boolean, plug that in and plug that in. Hit compile. Go back to at the end where we've done, we cut that from, we've got float value. We can just drag that float that we stored as a variable into it there. Okay, I think that's all right so far. So what we'll also have to do is put this thing at the start as well. So cut that and plop that in between these two. Getting a bit messy now. Just space out a bit. Put that there. Put that there. Uh, this float value doesn't have to go there. Just go here. Okay. Good. So that way it's always going to be checking the distance and it will only then set the value if this is true as well as this is true. After the and, we're gonna put in a branch and hook that into the and. And if that is true, we're gonna change it to the, what we had currently and tick the Boolean rather than drag it through as a pin. I'm then going to duplicate that. So I'm gonna copy paste into the false and tick that as false. Not as false, sorry, delete that, we don't need that, sorry, my bad. So once that does that, that's it. That should be the only time it sets it. And then the return task is what unsets it. So now when I push play, it'll chase me, then stop chasing me and head back to his original point. And if I get close to him when he's near his origin, he'll continue chasing me. There you go. And that's it for our Goblin AI. Uh, we'll do attacks and, uh, well, not for attacks, but we'll make him just so when he clients with a player, he'll do damage. Um, but other than that, we are done with the Goblin. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to watch the next part, in the next part, we're going to be doing a level design. So if you want to watch that next, we can go straight over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely. Where it's just one dollar, we'll get access to that video, plus many others as well. Thank you to all the, those who have supported me over 2019. And I look forward to sharing everything with you in 2020 very, very soon. Thanks all, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.